Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Downwind Camera Guy, and in this episode, I'm gonna go ahead and test out the Alpha 6300 with some tennis. So today, uh, on Saturday, there was a local um, tennis tournament for doubles at the high school, and I went ahead and took out the Alpha 6300 along with the 70-200 f4 optical stabilized lens. You know, I wanted to go ahead and test out the camera in different environments. Uh, the first one was with Color Guard, second one was with baseball and, and now this one with tennis. Uh, so I've had, again, it's my third uh, sort of event type sport to go ahead and test out the new camera. As far as a couple of things I want to talk about with, uh, with shooting tennis, number one is the tracking and the ability for the camera to catch the action. Um, I experienced hardly any issues at all. I, had, I was shooting on wide as far as the zone. I was using continuous autofocus and the camera tracked it exactly as I was expecting. I shot at H plus, a high plus, which is like the 11 frames per second burst. So I, I felt that the camera did exactly what I needed it to do and it tracked the subjects well, without any problems. Number two was the buffer issue with the camera. Now I did switch off to a Sandus Extreme Pro card and the first thing I will tell you is that for shooting JPEG or just fine, there's two actually, there's two JPEG settings, extra fine and fine. When shooting in fine, if you do a long burst of shots, uh, you will be able to preview your stuff and change settings pretty quickly. You might have to wait, you know, a short second. But if you do happen to shoot in raw and you're shooting high burst rates and you're taking a lot of photos, what'll happen is you will experience some lag even with a Sandus Extreme Pro card. And I think that was something evident that a lot of other YouTubers and, and reviewers have mentioned is that the, the buffer just isn't there. And so when it comes to a DSLR, if RAW is really important to you, then this may not be the camera for sports that you're hoping for. So that's the thing I want to make a statement about that. Number three, let's talk about 4K at 24 frames per second. The jelly effect, the rolling shutter, it is apparent, it is very visible. So if this is the camera that you want to use for shooting sports, if you are okay with that jelly or rolling shutter effect in your in your footage, then this is still a really viable camera of your choice. But if for some reason that kind of rolling shutter is enough to disturb or bother you, then you may want to consider a different camera. Now, it isn't as bad as it is in 1080p. So if you go ahead and shoot in 1080p, you really won't notice the, the rolling shutter effect as badly as you would see in sort of like a DSLR. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Again, with the slow motion, it is amazing to have the ability to shoot at 1080p at 120 frames per second. The quality is really good and it just looks very clean. I mean, and it adds another dimension to your uh, to your workflow. So uh, I think that 1080p at 120 frames per second is definitely going to open up doors with creativity and options. And I think that's going to be fantastic uh, for a lot of cinematographers and even hybrid hybrid shooters. Another topic I wanted to cover is the battery life. Uh, I only shot for about an hour and a half out here. I was doing a, a mix of both photos and video. I did stumble on a problem. I actually, you know, I picked up two additional Sony batteries. There were Wasabi batteries. And what I noticed was when I, I used them, I popped them in. I, I could have sworn they were charged, but when I popped them in, they just weren't working. And so I was a little concerned about that. But what's really great about the Sony cameras is the fact that you can charge it in body right you can just get a, a little adapter and a little power external power pack and plug it in and so what i ended up doing was since i had the 6000 i went and popped in the battery of the 6000 and started charging it and as soon as i got that jolt of that charge going and the battery the battery was being read by the camera again so i was happy about that so as far as batteries and um and having a little advent advantage over some of their dslr counterparts being able to charge directly into the camera and charging the battery can come in handy um, in a tight pinch. A couple of notes, when it comes to a sport like tennis, you're sort of isolating the subject. So when you zoom in with your lens, you're able to kind of just focus on that one individual. And so face tracking was really handy as well when I was shooting photos. So as, as you're seeing some of the examples, you are gonna notice that uh, the face tracking is just working and it's locking onto its subject. So as far as tennis is concerned, as far as the, the timeline, this camera is gonna work really well. The camera's really light. I'm not experiencing any pain or back issues or anything like that of any sort. Um, I'm really, you know, after having a few times at, uh, using this camera, it's, it's starting to really be interesting. So my final conclusion about the camera so far, I don't know if I'm gonna be shooting anything else today, but uh, 
The thing that I really do like about the camera is one, it's light. The autofocus is amazing. Um, it locks onto its target. It finds the, the individuals when you need it. If video is something important to you, you can definitely use the 4K, but not for moving subjects, if, unless you're not okay with the rolling shutter. Slow motion is fantastic if you do need slow motion at 120 frames per second. Some cons, battery life, I, I wouldn't say is really a con with the camera as much as it would be. Uh, video, again, the rolling shutter would be a con. And right now, I guess it's just sort of the lens options that Sony might have for you. So uh, again, these are just things I'm, I'm thinking about off the top of my head. There's other things out there. But, but overall, as far as the experience with the camera, it is a fun camera to use, especially if you do a little bit of both video and photo, you're really gonna enjoy this camera. Uh, right now, as far as what I'm doing, I'm recording in 4K. I'm not doing S-Log, I'm just recording 4K, no picture profile, um, running the audio straight into a Rode, Rode mic and that's been so far the experience with the camera. If you have any questions or comments, uh, anything related to this, go ahead and post them down below um, and I'll help try to answer those questions. And if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, and if you do enjoy the videos I'm producing on my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Now, if you did go ahead and miss my last video about shooting some baseball, you can go ahead and find the link somewhere next to me or up there on the icon above. And with that said, I'll catch you later. Bye.